Hi guys, welcome back to the channel here on Jared Gunson TV. Uh, I got something really special in studio, and it is the Boss Gigcaster 8. We're going to have a look at it now. All right, so welcome back. I've got the Boss Gigcaster. It's currently doing its rounds. I've seen a couple of cool videos by Boss themselves, as well as by Matt going into Andertons. I highly recommend you go watch that video because he does a great demonstration using it for podcasting. If that is your vibe, I mean, you've got everything you need. But I wanted to see if it would uh, fulfill my needs creating content as well as doing recording work for bands and seeing if it's more than just a podcast mixer and i can say it uh, most definitely is this is basically what your device looks like you got all your inputs along the top you got your four headphone volumes over there up here on the back end you've got four combo inputs which are xlr or jack four mini headphone outs just behind it at the back over here and then you've got a left and a right jack that i've got currently running to my studio setup you've got some recording capabilities here using an sd card which i haven't got into you've got some pads over here for sound effects or for midi or commands or assignable things to the device such as turning effects on and off or sending cc or pc midi messages out your master fader is here every channel has got a nice light when you press on it you press on it again to get back. The pads are also two modes. Or you press it again, it lights up, and then these become whatever you program to be. So for example, I have now learned how to, using these three buttons here, I can, the middle one will be my desktop, which we're not gonna go to. But you can see now we are looking at um, the top down view. If I press this over here, we're now back out at face cam. So this is not just an audio mixer. This is also kind of doing a little bit of stream deck type thing. So let's just start with the basics. Your channels. Channel one is either the microphone in at the back or you plug your guitar in the front. There is a full size guitar jack in the front. If you press that channel, you get welcomed with a few things down there as well as a few things over there. So what are they? You decide what you want your input to be. So you can see on channel one, the input is guitar, which means this one down here on the front, or you could just press there and change it to being the mic input, or you could press the next one, which would turn it into a stereo pair. So channel one and two would be linked. Um, there's the internal mic. I haven't really played much with that. And then there's also the headset mic, which is just over there. You can see it. that's a picture of a cell phone or a mobile phone. That is a headset input over there, which is using the mini input. Then you've got gain. You can see I've gone plus seven because obviously whichever guitar I was using at the time needed a bit of a hotter signal. So I gained it up. You've got a few, I think these are quick access type toggles. There's an EQ. There are some effects. And then there are settings. If I was playing guitar, you would see a level there, which I will do for you shortly. And if you press the button again, you are returned to your master sort of channel view. If you press and hold one of these buttons, it takes you to your effects chain. And then this is basically modeled off, they say it's GT1000 tech. You can just press and hold, go through things. I've now set um, one of my buttons, this one over here, to turn my amplifier, which is that block over there, on and off. So if I want a clean sound, and then I want a drive sound, I just turn it on and off like that. And then this one I believe is reverb on and off. You can see it there right at the end. Let me actually get my guitar quickly and demonstrate this for you. The guitar is plugged in. With the wireless. Ignore this jack, this is just for my GK3 input. Now I can't hear that, but you should be able to hear that. And that is because my fader is down. So I'm gonna unmute. And then at a 
press of a button, which will be this button, Alright, and then if you look at your input and stuff, you'll see it like that. And then your channel mixer, the level that you see there, is the level that's being sent from the fader to the master and out to your speakers. So I can pull this all the way down. I don't hear that at all, but you should hear that. I can even mute it and you'll still hear it. Pretty cool, eh? So you're probably wondering, well, you are plugged in with a mic. Why don't we see any level over there? You know, um, why aren't we seeing anything? Your master's up. Uh, could it be this fader? No. Um, my mic is going into channel two, and you can't see anything. But if I press channel two, there's my input level going there, going mad at plus 40 with uh, 48 volts phantom power. Uh, there are a few EQs and things going on in here because I obviously did a few tests before I started using this. Now those are all on. I use this EQ section just to clean up my mic a little bit. Um, like you, you can see there, 2.5, 250, 250 I seem to be cutting a lot. And low cut, I'm doing 100 hertz just because there was a bit of a boom in this room. But if you go in here by pressing and holding into your actual chain, you can see this is quite a short chain. Um, I've got the enhancement, that compression over there. So you'll see 57 enhance naught. If we go into the chain and we go under enhance, you see enhance naught 57. It's almost like a quick shortcut to that section there in your chain. Just doing some basic compression, uh, a little bit of de-essing. Then I've got a noise gate on. And if I turn the noise gate off, you can probably hear that. Noise gate back on. Then I'm running another EQ over here at 160 hertz, minus four, 630. Another low cut at 80, and I'm boosting again here by four, once again, because I, I wanted to hit a certain level in OBS. Now I've got two effects there. I'm not really using those effects. I'm not really one for doing monster voices or chipmunks things. Maybe streamers will enjoy that sort of thing. But you've got the complete range of EQs here for your vocals. I see they've got pitch correct, but they haven't got pitch shift. Um, I don't know if that needs to come into a uh, firmware update at some some point because most of the uh, other streaming devices have that and uh, I don't know whether people like to use it or not but 
that's the only effect I found that was missing. You know, we got reverbs, delays, a whole bunch of cool effects. And then master section, patch level, etc. The reason this fader is down is because I don't want to hear it through the speakers, but I want you guys to hear it where I'm recording. So if I go into OBS, for example, you can see over here, there's my mic being recorded just fine. How, how do you set that up? You've got a variety of settings. You've got channel settings, and then you can go into all of them. Output, you've got pad settings, foot switch, you've got setup. And if we go into USB, under USB, if you set it to multi-track stream and you set it to pre-fader, the setting basically allows you to get a variety of inputs and outputs. So if I go back now to my desktop and I go into my sound options with that setting on under playback, you see you get channel two auxiliary, channel uh, channel one auxiliary, channel two, three, four. Yeah, so it's your four mic channels. And the way you access those is by going into, let's say we wanted to do it on channel three under general on whichever one of the four channels, you just engage USB auxiliary in. And then that becomes one of these playback devices. I was testing this out doing some online gaming, for example, uh, where I wanted my Discord to come through on its own channel so I could get, so I could balance my game with my chat. And sometimes the chat's too loud or the game is too loud and you don't necessarily want that. So, by doing that, I was able to set that to uh, channel three in. And then in Discord, uh, what I could do was under video audio, my input device was my microphone and my output device was channel three auxiliary. Super, super cool. You also get the sound pad, you get the USB mode. Now this one is important. This channel USB is this channel over here. And when you set your windows to use channel USB, everything your computer sends out like a left and a right on a sound interface, before it goes to the speakers, it comes out of channel, uh, well, I call this channel five. So this would be my playback for anything. So my game would be here, my Discord would be here. If I was playing some guitar, it would be there. My mic never goes up unless I want to hear it and I'm playing a game with headphones. Then I use my mic there. Something that nobody has mentioned yet. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If you are using a door and you want to demonstrate a new plugin or do some tutorials, you have to run a plugin, usually Restream, on your uh, master fader and then you've got to use a plugin in um, in OBS this was the plugin we used to use I'm now for the sake of this just going to get rid of it so you can see there's nothing here on my master fader and let's just say I wanted to show you guys some drums The reason that is working is because in your door, the same way you would set up your windows, you're using the Gigcaster as your audio interface. So therefore, all your sound is coming through into the USB channel. And then that USB channel is being captured by, OB, uh, by OBS. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that alone is a game changer for, for us PC users. Because I know in Mac, there was some sort of a uh, re audio routing or loopback feature that they had. Whereas on PC, we always had to run a, a plugin. Thanks to this, we're now able to capture everything that this interface hears straight into OBS. And if you look at the way that my system is set up here, 
I've got channel one, which is my guitar. I've got a main, which is basically, if I was using headphones and I wanted to do a basic mix, um, sort of on the board, you know, it would then record that basic mix into the main. You've got my mic here, which like you can see, my mic is all the way down and it's muted, but you're still hearing it because it's going pre-fader out into OBS. I've got my pads here. So you can hear those and then USB. So you can hear everything that comes out of Windows, everything that comes out of the door that you're using. Um, this mixer has changed everything for me. I used to have a small little Behringer mixer, a GT1000 core, uh, M Audio 2x2 so that I could do some mic recording, I could do some guitar recording, I could blend my sounds together over here. But now with this, it's all built into one. I've, I've done tracks, guitar tracking, using nothing but a guitar in this mixer. I've mixed and mastered projects. Um, I've played games online and I'm now doing videos with OBS. What more do you need in a home studio? This thing is absolutely perfect for all those kinds of needs. And I highly recommend you go have a look at this, try it out. Um, the buttons all here feel like the SPD type buttons. The faders, they've got a bit of push to them. They're not loose, if you know what I mean. There's a bit of resistance. Uh, these all glow nicely. When I close all the curtains and I play some games here or I'm doing some work, this lights up nice and colorful. I'll see if I can put a picture here so that you can see what it looks like. The headphones is more than enough juice. When I'm rehearsing, I hook my iPad up via Bluetooth into this device. I plug my guitar into channel one, or if I feel like standing up, I'll use the katana behind me. And I Bluetooth audio from my iPad to here so I can practice with my tracks before I go and do a gig. And there is a switch there. Bluetooth on or off. So if you want it off, turn it off. If you want it on, turn it on. Then you've also got, um, they use a phone icon, phone or tablet. I suppose for the podcasting guys who maybe want to have a tablet with some royalty for your music playing, you could do that. I actually test drove it using um, my Xbox. <laughs> so that's about it really. Um, I just wanted to talk about it and just show it to you guys and just tell you that this has changed my game here at home. And I think wherever I go, if I need to be doing work, I'm taking this with me. It looks nice on a desk. I mean, look, it looks nice. <laughs> it does also come in the five, which is a bit smaller. It doesn't have the buttons. So if you feel, I felt like I didn't need the buttons, but after seeing that it could do MIDI, I was like, well, Let's give it a go and maybe I'll be able to do what I'm thinking I can do, which is basically do all of that. I play the intro from here. I play my outro from here. I turn two effects on and off and I start and stop recording from OBS. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that this was a little bit informative. If you have some questions, let me know so I can answer them. Um, I think Boss have done a fantastic um, playlist of how to get started with it. So that's why I'm not doing a full on tutorial unless it's on specific uh, videos like maybe how to get a good mic sound or anything like that. So let me know if you need any of that. That's it for, for me for now. From me for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.